Hi everybody! In the previous videos where I showed the adding expansion memory to the Atom using the onboard piggybacking of the RAM chips, I really didn't show how to piggyback a RAM chip. So I want to take some time, a few minutes here, and just show you how I did that. So this is a RAM chip that I piggybacked. This right here is the CAS line that you would bend up. It's pin 15. You would bend up and that's what you connect to the other eight RAM chips and then to CAS2 to make the top RAM chip be expansion memory and the bottom RAM chip be regular memory. Now to piggyback them it's really easy. What I'm going to use though is I'm using a little, I use a little prototype board, breadboard that I play with. It's just got stuff on it. I don't take it off. Now I'm not going to waste some memory chips like this on just showing how to do this because they are kind of expensive. But I have a bunch of these little latches laying around that are exactly the same number of pins. So what I do is, first thing I do is I take and I will put the bottom one in here. I do that just so it holds it in place. I don't want it floating around. Now this is the one I got to bend the pin up. So I take pin 15 which is that pin right there and bend it up and I should have maybe got the tweezers but yeah bend it up out of the way make sure you're able to see that as such so that's up out of the way now the other pins I want to make sure they're lined up good what you do is then you take these uh -huh. Bend them a little closer so they snug up tighter. Take this and set this on top of the other chip so that the legs of the chip on the top are sitting on the legs and the chip on the bottom. See how that works there? See that? I need it closer for you. See that? How that works? Then you take this soldering iron and a little bit of flux. And you just come in here and take your glasses off so I can see a little better. I just come in here. And add a little solder to each. Pin. The breadboard's moving around on me, I should. Yeah, a little bit too much on that one. Let me get something to hold this in place so it doesn't flop around on me. Alright, so what I got here is I got a 6 inch clamp here. It's heavy, it's about 15 pounds. Now I use it just to hold it in place, just so things don't flop around. That'll make life a little easier for me here. Now I can go in here. I'm not sure if you can actually see this, but what I'm doing is I'm just going in here and heating up a little bit of solder and letting it just go down onto the leg seal that leg in place. Alright, so those sides are done. Turn this around, go the other way, same thing. Now yeah, uh, a desk vice would probably work really good, but sometimes you have to make do. Every now and then I have to tap off the excess solder because I'm getting too much solder on it in two places. Of my iron, that is. All right, now that that is done. I'm going to have to clean it. Take it, I pull it out. And I take my soldering iron. And I just go away from the pins because I want those pins to be clean. I just do this. I just eh, clean off the excess. See? And getting a better, cleaner connection. with the burn my fingers. Again, away from the legs so that when I put them in the socket, you 
It's getting a little warm. It's getting very warm. <laughs> Hot. Maybe I need an oven mitt, huh? I got a lot on that one. Let me see if I can get some of that out of it. That's better. All right, so there we go. Cleaned it up with a little rubbing alcohol to get rid of the solder and the flux. I had to get rid of the flux, not the solder, obviously. But then it's been piggybacked. Now, obviously, this is not a RAM chip. This is, like I said, it's just, uh, what is this one? This is a 74HC04M. I have no idea. Hex inverter. Who knows? I don't use it. I just had extras. I don't know why I got them somewhere along the way. But that's how you do it. Now, it's been doubled up and... Now you can drop that into the socket inside of the atom and connect your wiring up. See, that right there is done the same way. It works good. So yeah, quick little example of how to piggyback the chips. It's not that hard. Trying to do it while it's in the computer is very hard because you don't have room. But piggybacking outside is very easy actually. Have a good one.